too. Mm-hmm. Kyrie Irving, right? He, he's doing a great thing for the WNBA. He's going to be mm-hmm. putting together a fund of $1.5 million. Hopefully, it's going to continue to grow for the WNBA players that won't be playing in this current season right here. Natasha Cloud, a whole bunch of other different names that are choosing not to play. And a huge shout-out to Natasha Cloud. She's doing a great thing for the NBA. She's really heavily involved in the different social injustices and Seen her on the show with Don Lemon a couple weeks back as well, too. And um, huge shout-out to her for what she's doing. And um, Kyrie Irving, right? We were just talking about building. Mm -hmm. After watching him play for the length of time he's been in the league, I have to say this, that he no longer, to me, is the number one option. Mm -hmm. He's a number two option. Like, he can't be the man. Why I say that is because when he was in Cleveland by himself, Cleveland didn't do well. When he was supposed to be the man in Boston, it didn't go well. It's not taken away from his game. I just think he's an elite piece to the puzzle, right? His scoring ability is off the charts. He can drive. He's not a great three-point shooter, but he can hit the three. He creates. He gets everyone involved. But I think it's something within his leadership and just within his game. He's box office. Like, the man is a straight-up bowler. But when I think of starting a team, I was pushing for Kyrie, if I would say, up until when he got – when he left Boston. Um, after he left Boston and he went to Brooklyn, I feel like I finally accepted that he's the number two on a great team. Well, first, I want to commend Kyrie for the for the one point five <laughs> million dollar supplement donation. That's big. You have to commend him. So, whatever the on court on court differences are, whatever what he's doing off the court, you have to commend, especially for the WNBA women who are deciding to play, you know, to fight for social justice, who decide to focus on their own physical or mental health. Uh, so, whatever their reason is, I think that is great that Kyrie is in support. So, I think that donation would definitely be used in a positive way, and I'm sure that those the ladies who will benefit from that will appreciate it. But flipping over to what you say as far as him not being – the go-to guy for his team, I would have to agree. I think that Kyrie's a point guard that you know his true ability as far as being able to score, being able to create shots. But I think when you talk about having that leadership quality and being able to rally a team together and say, hey, guys, let's do this. Let's put these things together. Be strategic at times. I think he lacks those qualities. And I think that's good that he's able to have someone like LeBron. You saw how that played out in the championship they were able to acquire. Moving forward to Brooklyn now, he does have a Kevin Durant. And I feel like that's what he lacked in Boston. He had to be the brains of the operation. And sometimes guys aren't ready to be Batman. Sometimes they're good at being Robin. And if that's what he has to be for for the benefit of the team, I think that Kyrie's at a point where he's willing to accept that. So if it's a LeBron James or if it's Kevin Durant, I think if it's, if it's going to work out for the team aspect, I think that that's a role that Kyrie's willing to fulfill now. So hopefully going into this, going into next season when, when Kevin Durant and uh, is back and the team is, is all put together and we have a regular restart to the, the, the season, actually, I think we'll, we'll be able to see something good come out of Brooklyn. And not to not Kyrie, I want people to fully understand what I'm saying. I think that Kyrie, we have this thing that we do. The best person on the team is supposed to be the leader. Mm-hmm. I feel like Melo got put in that situation when he was in New York, right? I feel like he was the best on the team, but Melo's like a silent leader. Mm-hmm. Right. And most times we look at the leader as someone that's vocal will speak up. Right. Some leaders come in, they just give you their 30 and they go home. You know, if you want to talk a little bit about something, we can do that. But I'm not going to be as vocal with you. I put my work in on the court. And, and, I'm, and I'm glad and I'm glad you said that, because that to me is what I'm scared of in Brooklyn. Because the Kevin Durant, who is the leader, he's what you said. He's come in. He gives his 30 and, and he goes and home he and he goes home. So I think that so that, him and Kyrie can't both do that, but somebody but we, we has to step mm-hmm. up. I mean, you're right. That's we great. don't know, but mm-hmm. to be two dominant forces like that, I mean, we I feel like we have some idea of what we're gonna see out of Kevin Durant because he played along Russell Westbrook. Right. I don't feel like it's gonna be too too different from Kyrie. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be a little bit craftier, but it's not gonna be way different. I think. They might win more, but we're going to have to see how they gel together. 
But um, yeah, I'm I'm just saying that to say like I don't take it away from Kyrie. It's just what he's shown us is that he's very smart, he's very intelligent. But I don't feel like leadership is the strongest role for him, and we get caught up in because of his skill level. We automatically want him to be a leader, right? And I think, and I, but 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 to that point, I think sometimes you have to take other examples and look at those when you look at golden state those those years that they won championships if you were to ask me who the leader was i wouldn't say it was clay i wouldn't say it was steph the years they won without kd and when kd was there i wouldn't say it was him i would say the leader is draymond green so at sometimes your best player isn't going to necessarily be your most vocal or be right. the leader of the team so i think in this aspect there's no telling how Brooklyn could be you, you can go in and, and the coach be the leader we can go in and it could be someone like a Karis LeVert or be a veteran on a team like a Jamal Crawford you never know it, you never know who the leader could be but that's just what you have to see and again they haven't played with each other on in a game yet so we don't know how they're going to mesh we don't know how that chemistry is going to be on the court you could just hope that those two players want to be able to get along and individually we know that they're going to get off so we're just looking to see how how it plays out and how the team meshes not to mention they added Jamal Crawford, Jamal Crawford, excuse me, and Michael Beasley. So it's no telling if they keep those two, what they could do for the team along Spencer Dinwiddie and, you know, DeAndre Jordan and, and, and the whole squad. So I'm happy to see what they're going to do. But huge shout out to Kyrie Irving looking out for the WNBA because we have to look after our women, our black women, all women, you know, um, because – the WNBA, they, they struggle over there. Like we were saying a little bit earlier, top salary in the NBA, uh, WNBA is, is a little over $200,000. That's good for your average person, but some of them still have to work other jobs, still have to go play other seasons, you know, um, internationally. So um, head up to the WNBA, man. A uh, group of strong women that's still balling out here and, and changing the world. My boy nice. Lou Williams is in the building. Magic mm. City. Like Lou, will. <laughs> like Lou Will. Like Lou Will. Everybody just want to be like Lou Will, whether it be another athlete, whether it be a rapper. Oh, like man. But but I think this is the only instance I wouldn't want to be Lou Will. 